Hello, so let's go now over the most important application of diodes, and that's in the design of power supplies. And so, in this activity, we are to design an unregulated power supply to convert 110 AC voltage to DC according to the following specs. We want an output voltage of 20 volts with a ripple of less than 2 volts, it's unregulated, a maximum load current of 1 amp, and we need to choose the transformer, the capacitor, the bleed resistor value, etc. So let's start with that. Step number one, in any circuit like this, uh, is really to have a topology, or what I call a, a skeleton, right? Of the circuit. What is the circuit that will enable us to do that? So if we think about, okay, we here have the line voltage, which is 110 VAC. What needs to happen here? Well, we may have a, a fuse, but then we have a transformer. What? So we are going to reduce that voltage here, which is the 120, sorry, the 110, the AC, to something lower. And that's an AC voltage also. We can use a diode bridge or a full way rectifier. You can go to the previous video if you want to see how this circuit works. And we are going to have, if you recall, if we were to put this to a load here, RL, we'll have a full way rectifier, right? So if we were to do this, what we will have, if this is time, this is a voltage, for whatever voltage that we have here, right? We have something that looks like this. Since we need to create a, sub a power supply, we're going to have a capacitor, or we can have capacitors in parallel. There, this is C, several capacitors, where at the very minimum, we are going to be charging, discharging. And we are asked that this ripple, this variation, this load, needs a variation of a ripple of less than two volts. So that's going to affect us the value of the capacitor. And it says here to choose the transformer. So the transformer, we're going to select it. The capacitor. And also the bleed resistor value. We want to have here a resistor value, RB, that if we disconnect the load, we actually are going to discharge C when load is disconnected. So this is our topology of the circuit. Two. We are going to select the transformer. Okay. And so what we have here is we know that we have 110 VAC and we need to say, well, what do we want to reduce that to, right? What is the voltage that we want at this other end? That voltage input to the circuit, if this is the source, voltage input, should be the voltage output that we want here across the load. This is where we're going to have the output voltage, which we are as 20 volts plus the fact that we have drops due to the diodes, right? So we have um, 
two diode drops, 1.4 volts. And we may want to add um, the ripple, right? VR. So we want to make sure that we always, at a very minimum, we are at 20 volts here. So this will be, the output is 20 volts, plus 1.4 volts, plus 2 volts of ripple, right? So we have here around 24 volts. I just added here two. Okay. And with that, therefore, what we have is V input over, sorry, Vs over uh, V input is 170. So it is 120 square root of 2. If we have a 120 input, 120 times the square root of 2 divided by 24 which gives us 7.07 .07, or that we want something like an 8 to 1 transformer. Okay? 3. We need to select the capacitor. C. Now recall from when we were doing um, peak detectors etc. that I, in a capacitor, right, the current, if you recall, in a capacitor we have the current, the current voltage characteristics are such that the current is proportional to the rate of change of the variation of the voltage, or in this case, it's going to allow us to choose the capacitor, or by knowing the change in voltage that you want over the change in time. Now, the change in voltage, the maximum that we allow it is 2 volts, and the time we know it, because it's one half the period at the input, right? So what we have, 80, so difference in voltage, 2 volts maximum, and 80, in this case, is the period of the output, which is 1 over 2 the frequency of the input. Remember, that this frequency, this period is half of the input, or twice the frequency. The frequency is 60 Hz, if it is an AC line. And so we get 2 times 60, or 8 milliseconds. So with this, we are able to, for a particular load, C is equal to my load current, I load times the 8 milliseconds, 8 milliseconds, divided by 2 volts, the load current, in this case, we want 1 amp. So this is going to be equal it's approximately going to be equal something to 4 millifarads, which you could add a couple of capacitors in parallel. Right? So right now, we have a circuit that does that function. It will charge, and go discharging, and it will not discharge more than 2 volts. Now, if you make it, these are approximations, and do not worry about getting it exact. In each one of them, we are being conservative so that we will exceed the specifications. A couple of other um, considerations here. Um, bleeder resistor, fuse rating, Etc. So the fuse rating, you will want to be what? Approximately what? One amp uh, over the current in the primary, 
right? So it will have one and over eight times four times two, right? If you want some current charges, okay? This is you don't want to blow up. Um, when it is full loaded, so I'm going to say here current. Oops. In primary. N times less. Less than secondary. So you you may want the one amp rating. Okay. And the bleeder resistor. You want to be able to discharge C in a few seconds, right? So in this case, R C a few seconds, right? But large enough not to load the supply. So you may want to do a say four seconds or something like that. And we will have RB equal to four over four M equals one kilo ohms, something like that. So let's 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 write this. What do we need? Step number one, the skeleton. Step number two, we select an A to one transformer. Step number three, we look at the capacitor. Four millifarads. Conservatively, so that that's the maximum ripple that we have. And this is easy to determine because we know what is the variation in voltage, two volts, how long does it take? In this case, the period, this we are being conservative, is approximately equal to a milliseconds, half of the period of your input line voltage waveform. So 60 hertz, instead of being 1 over 60 hertz, is 1 over 2 pi 60 hertz because the frequency is twice. You can connect us a fuse of approximately 1 milliamp. A good, good rule of thumb is that this is going to be approximately equal to um, the current that you're going to, to have in your circuit. And the bleeder resistor also is something that is going to be high enough not to load the, in the circuit, but you may want to be able to discharge the capacitor if you disconnect the load. So this is an unregulated supply. And so we should get something like this after the initial transient, where the lowest voltage that we will have is 20 volts, and this can go all the way to 22 volts. Now, in the second part, we can make this better by adding a regulator. Even a, sinner, a simple regulator like a sinner improves the circuit. Thank you.